to be very decisive when it is required of you. It is reassuring to know that I can count on someone like you. It's only because I haven't found out how to ditch you yet. <laughs> Jesus, that's the top answer. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is HMO4 Gaming. Welcome you back to Knights of the Old Republic. In the last episode, we wrapped up Kashyyyk. We put Zalbar's daddy in charge and all the stuff that's going on here. We got um, Jolie Bindo, and you're probably wondering why I'm doing this off key, not really doing this correctly. Well, some parts of this video, my voice recording is terrible, so I have to do a lot of this in post-production. Right now, we're gonna go talk to Candorus, and he's gonna tell us about all the yeah, war what stories. Do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. We were still recovering from the war we fought with the Sith. We were not yet strong enough to fight the Republic again. We needed to train another generation to do that. <laughs> we would travel from world to world and descend on it in our basilisk war droids. I still remember my first combat. I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor linked directly with the basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else? Your choice. And I mentioned the microphone was kind of off during that whole thing. So right now we're going to go talk to Mission and see what she's got going on. Hey there. What can I do for I want to talk to you about your brother. I'm sorry for the way I acted before. It's just that when it comes to Lena, I tend to get a little worked up. My brother and me had a hate her so going. much. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. You mean no matter how much he stole? I'm not gonna pretend Griff wasn't a hustler and a con artist, but that doesn't mean you can just. Well, I guess she's him. playing him and basically yelling at him. Hey, he's a con artist and a hustler, but, but it's okay because he did it for was, me. But for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. That just makes it all right. So what happened next? After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were going to try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd come back and get me. And we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. Sounds like he deserted you. 
Maybe something happened to him? How is this Lena's fault? Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Taurus, Lena sunk her claws into Griff but good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. But part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay. And now after talking to Mission, I go talk to Jolie Bindo, but he doesn't really have anything to say. Zalbar basically tells us that he's going to keep his eyes and ears open, and he's happy that he can go back to Kashyyyk without any issues. Got something on your mind. Yeah, here's uh, Jolie, and he's got nothing really he can tell us. And like I said, Zalbar is just happy to be with us. And let's go head over and talk to Juhani. I feel I must apologize for the way I acted towards you before in the Grove. It was wrong of me. I am sorry for attacking you. I am sorry for thinking you would only try to kill me. I hope that by helping you in your task, I may redeem myself in your eyes and in my own. Yeah, right. Don't worry about Johnny. I forgive you. <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> Jesus. I think it's going to take a lot. No. Thank you. It is most reassuring to know that you can forgive me, even though I try to take your life. I can yeah, well. only hope that in our time journeying together, I will succeed. Don't worry, Juhani. You will. Can I immediately talk How to you? Be of a... Why don't you talk? What is it you would like to speak to me about? How did you come to be a Jedi? How I came to be a Jedi? I am sure you would not find it very interesting. Are you sure you would like to hear? Jahani, I would not be asking if I didn't. <laughs> Please continue. It goes back a number of years. Back on my home world, we did not see Jedi very often, especially where I lived. It was not the home world of the Cathar that I lived on. Yeah, the Qatar. My parents had long fled from that place. And perhaps that is a story for another time. Rather, it was a human hive world that I was raised on. The hind end of space. A pit of a world, to be sure, where Jedi rarely tread. But we had heard of them. Well, everyone had. So that is not to be unexpected. Champions of truth. Defenders of justice. Heroes of the Republic. It was very easy for a child to be enthralled by their image, their mystique. Maybe I was one of those children. Did you meet a Jedi? And then how did you get in order? Typical Chinese naivete. <laughs> yes, yes I did. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. I was old, and maybe a little enamored. The imagination can be a very dangerous thing. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi. To lift myself out of the rut I had been living in for years, and to make a real difference as the Jedi were. <laughs> the foolish delusions of a child. But this child made it happen. As soon as I was able, I left my world and went in search of them. I found them and was accepted. I had been living my dream on Dantooine for several years before you came. Although, perhaps I was not entirely ready for it. Or not completely suited to the task. Otherwise, I would not have fallen. But thanks to you, I have been redeemed. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. Action is what is needed. Maybe. And just making oh, sure... You don't have what anything else? You? you doing all right? Uh, I, I thank you for your concern, but I am still a bit shaken. Why? What is wrong? I have been thinking about myself, about Quatra, and about my fall to the dark side. I keep thinking that it was my anger that drove me that far, that nearly damned me. I look inside myself now and I can still see it. I still feel it. Perhaps you just need more time. It is the taint cannot be removed. Are you sure you should be here? You know, I really think I care very much. Don't care very much. <laughs> and I say that with the blanket stare. Perhaps you need more time. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. 
I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. I can't afford to look after you all this time. If I see you again and slip back, I will intervene. Great, another mouth to feed. I don't like any of these responses. I cannot afford to look after you all this time. If I see you begin to slip back, I will intervene. I thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. How may I... Nothing else. What is it? I have been thinking much about our journey, and I am Dude, grateful she's got and honored so much that you to talk have about. me with you. I am not used to such unbiased acceptance from one who is nearly a stranger to me. We Cathar do not make friends easily, or for long. Even on Dantooine I remained alone. Not ostracized exactly, but separate. It must have been difficult for you. Yes, it was. I find it difficult to speak of those things. I do not want to live that way ever again. And here, it seems different. It is... It is warming. I feel almost welcome. <laughs> Needed. You seem to be very decisive when it is required of you. It is reassuring to know that I can count on someone like you. It's only because I haven't found out how to ditch you yet. <laughs> Jesus, that's the top answer. <laughs> it's nice that you hold me in such regard. We are all in this together. It's nice that you hold me in such regard. To be accepted so... Regularly, I find it difficult to explain. It is so different from what I'm used to. Just thank you for accepting me. You got it. How may I? What? I think, yeah, I was gonna say, we don't have anything else. God, Johanny was very talkative. I can only imagine how much Karth and uh, Basila are gonna be talkative. All right, guys, you're the last two. Basila, you're probably gonna talk about more dark side stuff, right? How can I help? You seen something you want to ask me? I do. How did you know? Uh, uh mm, protagonist powers? Well, your face is all scrunched up like Catherine Pop. Well, you keep staring at me. Seeing anything you like? Educated guess from the way you keep staring. I'm a Jedi. I am far too disciplined to oh, betray my Jesus. emotions. Jesus, here she goes on her high displays. horse. Just let her cock. We both know the real reason you have some idea of what I'm thinking. The bond we share. Maybe. Our connection allows us glimpses into each other's mind. We can feel some of what the other feels, and what I feel within you troubles me. A Padawan must receive considerable training. They must learn to control their emotions and darker impulses. Often it takes years before using the Force can be considered safe. The fact that you are so strong in the Force and have had such relatively little training could have terrible consequences. For you, and for everyone around you. Now, knowing the full context of this game, like, I feel like this conversation, at least this phase of it, is just put in here to throw you off the scent of what's coming down the line. Because she knows damn well what's going on, and why she's even saying this in the context of knowing does not make sense. But, for a game, and for, you know, first-time players, okay, I don't think mastering my emotions is necessary. You could warn me when I do something bad. Blink once for dark side, twice for light side. <laughs> yes. This is not a joke. The choices you make could affect both our destinies. We'll be fine. Not to mention the fate of the Republic and the entire galaxy. There is much at stake. Thankfully, you've exhibited a degree of compassion and self-control up to this point. I sincerely hope you can maintain these traits in the future. We must all resist the influence of the dark side. It's everything we are fighting against. This is doubly important for you, with your natural affinity for the Force. I will try. Why are you getting so upset? I don't need your ask. Why are you getting so upset? I'm sorry if I come across as harsh, but I am concerned. For you, for our mission, and for myself as well. Our destinies are intertwined. Everything one of us does will have consequences for the other. Any reckless behavior on your part is likely to affect me as well. Maybe, but not as much as it would in the second game. <laughs> It would work both ways, doesn't it? You could help me stay strong. I won't do anything. Yeah, it works both ways. Yes, that is true. I will do my best to guide you, but I am no master. Not yet. And there are times when I find the sheer strength of your power almost overwhelming. Your power could be a gift or a curse. When you need guidance or advice or support, I will do my best to help you stay on the path of the light. 
I appreciate any help you can offer. I only hope I have the wisdom to help you through the dark times. But for now, we should return to our mission. All right. And Karth, what up? Yes, what's on your mind? I don't know. You tell me. I wanted to continue our discussion from before. I thought I said I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, I do, so guess what? Yes, but I'm bored, so spit it out. <laughs> I think you owe me an explanation, Karth. I suppose you're right. Fine, then. But I, I don't know why you're so interested, but here goes. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respected the most. Saul. You say the name like I should know who it is. That name sounds familiar, at least to me it does. With good reason. Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier, and I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was trying to recruit me into the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. I, I argued with him and he got angry and he left. I never saw him again. How can you have not seen that through that? You didn't think he would betray the pro Well, I mean, no, he's a commanding officer. But I mean, because, you know, soldiers are trained to, you know, that's the last thing on their mind. How can you not have seen it? I don't like any of these answers, but yeah. Saul was my mentor. Yeah, he there you go. He led us to so many victories against the Mandalorians. I mean, even when things looked to be at their worst, I just, I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to bypass our scanners. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what had happened. I mean, I could have stopped him. I, I could have stopped it all. Yeah, but you, you could not have known. So you blame yourself for trusting your friends? I blame Saul, not myself. I was, I was stupid and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. No, I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. I mean, there was a lot of eyes in their cards. That's terrible. I feel awful. I'll do the same thing in your shoes. So that's all of it, then? That's terrible. I feel awful for you. So that's all of it, then? No, no, it's not. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. Yes, Karth, but I do. Yes, what? Can we? No, I can't. You got it. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know there was a lot of exposition, a lot of talking to crew members, but it is a Bioware game, and that is honestly what you have to do before you set out to a new planet. All right, then let's head over to the galaxy map, and obviously, as I mentioned in my little update video, go check that out if you haven't already, um, we're going to head over to Tatooine, but first, we're going to make a pit stop over the Yavin. These coordinates point to a small space station orbiting the gas giant Yavin. Huh, what is this? Let's take a look. probably wondering what it is you basically should know it from the movies it is episode four from a new hope here on yavin the fourth moon of the yavin gas giants and you're probably wondering what is this place besides a giant hallway well we're gonna find out there's one guy living here and let's have a chat eh, eh, who's that what do you want i recognize your ship davik isn't it but who are you you knew or something uh, force persuade open the door. I'm a friend. Yes, I'll open the door for you, friend. There you go. And this is some time. He has a shop. Oh, you don't look as though you would, too, human. Don't see many of your kind here at the anymore. Not since the war, at any rate. What brings you here? I'm on a quest. I'm trying to defeat Darth Malak. Darth Malak? Never heard of him. Or is it that that new Sith Lord who's given the Republic such a hard time right now? I haven't been keeping up on recent news. 
He's beating the Republic pretty badly, you know. Eh, or that. That always seems to happen to the Republic. They always seem to be right on the verge of defeat, and then manage to spring back. I shouldn't be worried much. And even if they did lose, so what? It's not like it's going to affect me all the way out here. The ruins of Yavin 4 are gone, and nothing left but of Exar Kun, so the Sith have nothing to bring them here. Wait, what? Exar Kun? What? Don't tell me you youngsters don't know anything about Exar Kun and that war. But then again, there's been a lot of mm, trouble recently, I've heard. Enlighten me about Exar Kun. Exar Kun was a Jedi to start off, at least. He came here to Yavin and landed on the fourth moon, and that one you can see through the window. There have been some ancient Sith temples there, and in them Exar Kun gained terrible powers. He raised the Sith and waged war against the Republic, much like what we've seen happening today. But Exar Kun was far more powerful than any Sith Lord had come since. The very grounds trembled beneath the feet, and when he looked at you, you just... just but then all that's in the past now. I got my life of staying here and tinkering with stuff, and I found in the ruins the things the Trendosians and smugglers bring to me. Who are the Trendosians? The Trendosians, mercenaries and bounty hunters, scum mostly. They look like two-legged lizards. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like Rodians. Oh, that's not very nice to say. Uh, why are you here? What do you want with you? They found me here a couple years ago after the war ended. Usually they bargain with people they find alone in abandoned space stations, don't you know? But we work out deals. I give them a few more applicable inventions at a reasonable price, and they keep me supplied with food and new materials. It works out well so far for years, really. But with Davik gone, they've been getting ideas, though. Anything else you want to know? You willing to sell me? So yeah, he's basically a shop. Yes, I have a few things kicking around stuff. Trendosian smugglers have bought for me to look after a few things and make more parts. They aren't cheap though. They pay a lot that we can make. And anything I can sell you, I can exactly sell them now, can't I? But yeah, essentially he's an end game shop. You'd want to be coming here once your pockets are jingling, once you get all the star maps, or at least before you get all the star maps, because they do sell all the nice stuff. All these armors are super expensive, as you can see, $10,000, but the bonuses, and they are upgradable, so you can swap them out. I did look at the Bargwin Shadow Armor. I was thinking about um, Mission in my commentary. I was like, huh, she is all about stealth. It is six grand. It is the cheapest armor, and she's not tanking anything, so that might be tempting. And this is an unlimited use shield for... Uh, for the droids that we're going to be getting down the line and some gloves and some stems but we don't have money for that right now so i think um, without further ado we're going to head back to the ship say goodbye to our rodian friend here in the station so far and head on to tatooine <laughs> Vision. The Force is guiding us, helping us retrace the steps of Malak and his old master, leading us ever closer to the Star Forge. Tatooine is known for little but blowing sand. I find it surprising that there would be a star map somewhere in its desolate wastes. Maybe it wasn't always desolate. Yeah, it wasn't always a desert. Perhaps, though that would have been tens of thousands of years in the past. Now there's nothing but the howling emptiness of the Dune Sea. The star map would likely have to be within some kind of shelter to protect it against dust and sandstorms. I suspect there are many such caves and caverns hidden in the sands of the Dune Sea. The creatures of this world probably use them as their lairs. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. 
Indeed. Now let's head on out. Welcome to Anchorhead, potential customer. Zerka Corporation. Oh no, Space Walmart's back. After some formalities, of course. First, your ship is not on our list of planned arrivals for today. There is a docking fee of 100 credits because of this. Uh, what if I don't have money? Why do I get from my 100 credits? The immediate benefit is access to these very docking facilities. This is the only port in Anchorhead. Once you've paid, we will offer trade services as well. We're not unreasonable, we just want to cover expenses. Yeah, Basilo's not gonna like it, but whatever. I don't need to pay the docking fees. You know, I don't think you need to pay the fee. We'll let it go this time. Well, that was easy. I sure wish I had special mind affecting force <laughs> powers. This will cover any future landings as well. It's like a registration, so we can serve you better when you return. Now, as a customs officer, I can provide information on services. Is this visit business or pleasure? Very specific thing. Who should I ask? That's not much information. Could you tell me more? I'm looking for older things, antiques, and artifacts. You a digger? I've heard of ruins being found now and then, but they've always been stripped by sand people soon after. You're not going to get anywhere with them. I guess you could ask around, but I doubt you'll learn anything different. You could always ask a Jawa. It's hard to tell what they know. Give me some background information. I actually need to pay and work. What can I do here? It depends on what level of risk you want to take. You could ask at the Zerka office if any bounties need collecting. That's in the central anchor head. While you're at the office, ask for a hunting license so you can sell trophies to Faza in his lodge, just north of them. I suppose you could also take up swoop racing. Swoop races? Talk to the hut at the registration <laughs> office by the trap. They, That's they are a very good source head. of making money. I can't say I know which of these jobs is the most dangerous. I stay away from all of them. Okay. See you later. As you wish. If you need anything else, I'll be here. And all right, ladies and gentlemen, as we finally land on Tatooine after, you know, speaking to the crew, taking us pit stop at Yavin, seeing the Endgame store, I think that's where we're going to wrap up with today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit like, hit subscribe, do all those things on down below. In the next episode, we'll obviously be checking out the rest of Anchorhead here on Tatooine, see what everybody knows, pick up some side quests, maybe do some swoop races, and we'll do all that in the next episode. But until then, I have been Adam, this has been HMO4Gaming, and this has been Knights of the Old Republic. Thank you very much. Have yourselves a great day.